Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. Today you find Ross and me in very high spirits. I've driven, it's May, middle of May, 2023, and I've just driven from eastern Cotswolds over towards Sarancester in the early morning. And the beauty of the place is just extraordinary. The cow parsley is nearly as high as I am. The wonderful thorn bushes in the hedges, all the hedges around here are in full flower. It almost looks as though they've had a sprinkling of snow. It is extraordinarily beautiful. So our spirits, as I say, are very high. We're in a little village called Duntisborn Abbots. This is absolutely classic folding Cotswold countryside with a little village huddled in the middle, watched over by its ancient church, which we're going to show you around. Come with me. Once part of the estate of Gloucester Abbey, and guarded by a wonderful heavy, centrally hinged gate under a sturdy stone-roofed gatehouse, the Church of St. Peter disguises its Saxon origins rather too well. Most of what you see is late Norman, 13th and 14th century, with a comprehensive restoration done by Waller and Son in 1871. The lower stage of the sturdy West Tower is Norman with typical thin and deep window in the south wall. But the upper stage with its wider window in the west wall is later, perhaps late 13th century, perpendicular in style, topped with a saddleback stone roof and stone bell openings. The porch is definitely Waller's work, but probably a pretty good facsimile of the original. And the door is obviously very old, with heavy nail attachments. It makes a satisfying groan as you open it, and a suitably grave boom as you close it again. I read that it used to have a medieval closing ring, but it looks as though someone has either pulled it too hard or nicked it. Let's hope they know where it is. The feel of the church is spacious, albeit fairly dark because of the extensive 19th century stained glass. And Waller, as was the habit of both him and his son, retained the old stone features, such as the sedilia beneath the southeast window, and the piscina, now rather close to the ground owing to the raising of the floor. It has been widely said that the triple chancel arch, which at first glance I can't deny I rather liked, is over the top for a church of this size. J. C. Cox described it as preposterous in his guide. I'll leave it to you to decide. The decorated font is 12th century, with some lovely carving. But overall, I suppose I come away from St. Peter's feeling that the modern world of the 19th century perhaps treated the ancient world with slightly less respect than it should have. And so... Ross and I took to the village streets, with his head sticking out of the top of my car, holding his precious gimbaled camera, to give you the very best impression we could of the remarkable peace and beauty of this little village. Many of the houses are 17th century in origin, or earlier. They're grouped around the church, forming a sort of protective necklace, and their age gives them a true sense of gravitas, as if they'd sprung up out of the ground. At this time of year, the wisteria is in full bloom and shows brilliantly on the facades of several of the cottages. The whole place has a comfortable, cosy, well-groomed feel. We're in the valley of the River Dunt, which flows right through the village, and it crosses what was once the lower road to Duntspawn Lear, forming a long, deep ford, which used to be used for cleaning the wheels of the carts and coaches. 
What we know for sure is that the beauty of this place didn't escape the Roman settlers after their invasion of Britain in the first century AD. Several Roman remains have been found in this area, and the famous Roman road, Ermine Street, runs very nearby. And the Romans were not the first. A long barrow was discovered less than a mile southwest of this village, which is sadly now rather reduced by farming, but shows for how long this place has been appreciated by mankind. Long barrows were constructed as earth or stone mounds, with flanking ditches, and acted as a burial place during the early Middle Neolithic period of 3,400 to 2,400 BC. They are the graveyards of Britain's early farming communities and are amongst the oldest field monuments surviving in the present landscape. Long barrows appear to have been used for communal burial, often with only parts of the human remains having been selected for internment. This one was excavated, along with another about a mile further northwest, in around 1806, and the skeletons from them were reinterred in the churchyard in 1875. That's five and a half thousand years of village history. Now that is quite something. I hope you've enjoyed our little stroll around Duntersbourne Abbots. This really is a sort of classic Cotswold village. You, you get the real sense of community here. Uh, there are wonderful photographs of their Harvest Festival from last year, which clearly was a very jolly event. I love this place. It's brilliant. There are other Duntersmore villages. We're going to go and visit them soon. So keep following us. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on all normal platforms. And we'll see you quite close to here, I suspect, once more in the Cotswolds very soon.